I think this is my pleasure, and I think the honor of our newly founded Irish, uh, Irish Study Associate Taiwan to have visitors from Ireland. I think this is really a historical moment, and, uh, and there are, we are everybody here, and including the, the, our Irish guests, are witnessing the happening. So I think this is really a wonderful occasion. And uh, today, uh, well, first of all, I think we have to thank all of the members, you know, who have been so enthusiastic and who have been so passionate and very helpful. And uh, right now we are uh, outside the hall. We are trying to figure out who are going to be the core members. So after we have the core members and our older uh, 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 committees established, we can really have uh, uh, many activities you know, under proper supervision. So I think we can look forward uh, to all the events which are going to happen in the coming years. And as you can see, we have uh, several posters and also souvenirs from Ireland, which are contributed <laughs> from our members. And uh, we have been, you know, we have uh, quite a big group of Irish study scholars, you know, in Taiwan, and also some of our uh, scholars from America, from Germany, from many, many other countries who are teaching and, and researching our Irish uh, uh, authors and so on. And myself working on Irish drama. And I think, you know, Irish playwrights and the writers have been very inspirational to us. So I think a lot of us, you know, a lot of us have been studying this. So I think this is a, uh, after so many decades since, you know, Samuel Beckett was introduced to Taiwan in 1960s with the first uh, 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 Waiting for Gado. You know, to be produced in Taiwan. So I think after many, many decades with a lot of Irish authors to be introduced to the student, with a lot of literary works to be translated you know, uh, into our market. So I think finally we can have this uh, Irish study associations in Taiwan. And we hope that in the future we can have international uh, conferences you know, to be held in Taiwan and we can have a lot of uh, 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 Irish study scholars coming here to share with their uh, uh, thoughts and uh, I think uh, we are going to have we have uh, several uh, uh, senators coming here so let me introduce them okay uh, the first one is Senator Maurice Cummings and uh, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, the second Senator Imelda Harris and Senator Doreen Higgins Senator Terry Leiden. And Senator Sarah O'Brien. And uh, we welcome uh, Senator Maurice Cummins to give us uh, a remark. Uh, thank you very much. On behalf of all the, my colleagues here, we were delighted to be present uh, at the foundation here. Um, I remember coming here uh, some years ago when we met the professor again and some of his colleagues uh, with Susan O'Keefe, Senator Susan O'Keefe who comes from Sligo. Uh, and we were talking about something like this happening, exchanges uh, between Taiwan uh, and indeed uh, Sligo. And we're celebrating in June the 150th anniversary of Yates and I think it's a wonderful occasion and it's wonderful that we have so many people here that are so interested in the work uh, of W.B. Yeats. Uh, Yeats uh, was a romantic and uh, a modernist uh, and a certainly a, a mystical leader uh, of Irish uh, literary revival. Uh, he was a Nobel, priest, uh, Nobel Peace uh, Prize winner, uh, as you know, a dramatist and uh, above all a poet. Uh, and he began writing with the intention of putting his very self into his poems. And I have here a book which I'm going to give to the professor there, a book of all his poems. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I attended a function only uh, last week uh, with uh, the President of Ireland, President Higgins, and he visited my own city in Waterford. Uh, and uh, we, he visited uh, the Mercy Convent, the school which was celebrating its 50th anniversary. Uh, at the new school as it was then, 50 years ago. But he recalled that uh, Madame Montessori, if you probably, uh, in, uh, from education and point of view, 
the Montessori uh, method of, 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 of schooling and teaching and that. She visited, she was the first place that she visited was the Mercy Convent in Waterford. And I happened to have an aunt there at the time uh, when Madame Montessori uh, arrived in Waterford. And uh, it was the first school in Ireland to teach the Mont through the Montessori method. Uh, but W.B. Yeats himself came representing the government uh, to see how this type of new teaching uh, was going on. And my aunt actually met W.B. Yeats when he was visiting the school at that particular point in time. So the president was recalling all those events only last week. So Yeats is on the menu practically everywhere we go. So from, from Waterford uh, to Taiwan, uh, we're still talking about W.B. Yeats. But my colleagues were very glad uh, to be here and compliment you on, on your work. Uh, and wish you every success for the future. And thank you very much. As one of the guests from Sligo, which is uh, William Bossier's birthplace, would you like to give us uh, some words? Well, first of all, I have to correct you because he actually wasn't born in Sligo. He was born in Dublin, so he's very in Sligo. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for having us here. And uh, uh, I live in Sligo, and I suppose uh, it's. Uh, where WBH is buried, and uh, we get a lot of visitors every year uh, to our beautiful county. Uh, and he's buried under Ben Bulban. It's the most beautiful place if we ever get to come to Sligo. Um, but uh, WBH, uh, you know, has a huge association with, with Sligo, uh, my county. Uh, he was born in Dublin, as I just said. His mother, Susan Mary Hoxafin, came from a wealthy merchant family in Sligo. And soon after William's birth, the family relocated to the Hoxabin home at Murville in Sligo to stay with her extended family. And the young poet came to think of the area as his childhood and spiritual home. And he was taken away with this landscape, and he became literally and symbolically, it's, he called it his country of heart. Yeats is buried in Drumcliffe in County Sligo, and in the last lines of Under Ben Bulbin, one of his final poems, uh, he, it is on his gravestone, cast a cold eye on life, on death, horsemen pass by. In his youth, Yeats would visit Inish Free. It's an uninhabited island on Loch Gid and Sligo. And my home where I live, I live along the Garibone, which goes into Loch Gill. And actually, from one of my bedroom windows, I can actually see Inish Free Island. On one occasion, accompanied by his cousin Henry, they went on to the lake late at night on a yacht to observe the birds and listen to stories by the crew. These trips that Yeats took from the streets of Sligo to the remote areas around the lake set up for him the contrasting images of the city and the nature of the home, the Lake Isle of Inishbury. When he was living in London, he would walk down Fleet Street, longing for the seclusion of a pastoral setting such as the Isle. The sound of water coming from a fountain reminded him of the lake and its inspiration that he credits for the creation of the poem, which I'd like to read for you now. I will arise and go now, and go to Inishfree, and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made. Nine bean rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee and live alone in the bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight all a glimmer, and noon a purple glow, and evening full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day. I hear lake water lapping, with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. Hello.